evening. Welcome to Just Jada. I'm your host, Jada. On today's show, I have a very, very special guest, a very close friend of mine, model and entrepreneur, Miss Rochelle Jasper Mosby. Rochelle is going to talk about her career in modeling and also about entrepreneurship, um, about her business as a salon owner. Um, Welcome. How are you? Thanks for having me. You, how are you? <laughs> I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm so glad that you're I here. I know. Thank it's you. So long. We've been Thank trying you. to do this for such a long, long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how's life? It's good. It's good. I got to tell you, I recently changed my um, my name to Rochelle Hunter Mosley. Oh. I'm because so I met my biological father, okay. and he was a hunter. Okay. So I decided to change my last name after him. So now I'm Rochelle Hunter Mosley. Okay. Correction. <laughs> I have Miss Rochelle Hunter Mosley on my show. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, let's get into it. I I kind of wanted to start off. I know you don't really like to talk about this, but it's one of the things that I admire about you so much is I love talking about your modeling career. Okay. I, I love it. I know you don't like talking okay. about it. No, it's so okay. I kind of wanted to know how did you get started in modeling? Well, actually, when I started modeling, I actually went to school for self-esteem. I went to the Cameo Models in Richmond, Virginia for self-esteem because I was very unhappy with being dark-skinned. I was very unhappy with being thin, and I was very, very unhappy with myself, period. So when I went to Cameo Models, I went for self-esteem. And the young lady, um, Renee Lacey, is the person who, who runs the organization. She says, um, Rochelle, have you ever thought about modeling? And I was like, no, never thought about modeling, modeling. at all. So um, I just got into it. I, she, she had me walking. She had me taking pictures. And, she had me, and I never thought in a million years, because I'm, I'm very, very shy. And of course, you know, thank God for Naomi Campbell, because when that thing came out, out yeah. oh my God, she <laughs> made dark skin girls hot. So, oh, <laughs> everybody want a dark skin girl. girl. So um, Renee Lacey took me to Models of the South. And in Models of the South, I won every competition they put me in. Wow. And Amazing. I said, when I graduated from high school, I wanted to go to New York City. So I went to Vegas first. I was going to Vegas to be a showgirl okay. first, because okay. I just wanted to be in the lights, whatever it took. <laughs> I just wanted to be a showgirl. <laughs> but then New York called, so I came to New York and I started with Grace Del Marco in the Empire State Building. That's what Grace Del Marco was. Mm -hmm. And um, and from there, I've done Revlon boxes, Dark and Lovely boxes, Essence magazines. I mean, my thing was beauty. Beauty was, was my thing. Runway was okay, but I made a lot of money doing beauty. So print ads. Print ads. It's so crazy. That's everything. Right. I was going to ask you another question, but that was my next that question. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. So I was going to ask you, how did you, um, I wanted to talk about the Dark and Lovely campaigns. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, let me essence. tell you something. I You're was, on the box of Dark and Lovely I am, in stores I am. today. Well, that was one of the things that I really, really wanted. When I came to New York City, I said I wanted to be a Dark and Lovely girl, and I wanted to have a billboard. So I did do the Dark and Lovely thing, but my son wound up getting the billboard. So it's still like I did it. Did it. You know? Oh, my God. So, but it was the, one of the most exciting things. And when I did Revlon, I wasn't, I wasn't originally booked to do the Revlon box. They booked someone else. And then she got sick. I was like, oh, thank God for the flu. You know? <laughs> So then they called me, and I was, you know, and it was history from there with that dark and lovely, and within the Revlon, it was just crazy. I mean, I was doing doing beauty stuff hand over foot, hand over foot. At the very beginning of your at, career. At the very beginning, straight out, you know, straight out the gate, I, they were booking me for everything, wow. everything beauty. Because you know, when I first moved to New York, I had, I used to have a gold tooth. Uh, so, <laughs> I had two I of them. Oh, so, my God. So I used to <laughs> smile, you know. <laughs> like that? No, so like my that. agent was like, you know, you can't keep smiling like that. You're going to have to get those teeth fixed. Yeah, so okay. Oh. I wound up having them removed, and then I started booking the toothpaste stuff and this and that and everything. And Talk I was about smiling that. all over the place. I mean, it just was a lot. It was just a, it's just a lot of stuff because now I wasn't afraid to open up. Now, during that time, I was very shy. It was so crazy because talking, sitting, talking to one person, I used to be very, very shy and very, you know, oh, my God. But you put me in front of a camera or you put me in front of a bunch of people, I was fine. I didn't know. I didn't understand, yeah, the, yeah. you know, the it's, thing behind it. But I it was understand. that one-on-one -on -one I always had a problem with. So the cameras, you know, that's, 
my second thing to hair. So. Thing to, <laughs> yeah, um, we're going to touch on hair later, but I'm still mm -hmm. wanting to talk about this Molly thing. Yeah. So how did it change your life, like getting the ads and, 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 and um, getting the magazines? Like what did it do for your self-esteem as opposed to when you were initially starting out? Well, first, you, you know, I never thought in a million years that I could even do it. You know, being from where I'm from, from Richmond, so you know, we we from the same, same place. place. So it's just like you don't you don't really those those people that make it in that industry are people you see on TV. Like you don't know these people. Like how do they really they get these it. jobs? Got you it. know. But honestly, I didn't I didn't have a hookup. You know, I mailed my pictures off in the mail. You know, I, I got the agent I got. You know, my agent really really pushed for me, worked for me, and um, it was just you know. But back then they were calling them cattle calls. So mm -hmm. you go on your cattle call, you wait for two hours, and it's like two you and 1,500 other girls. Mm -hmm. And then it's 1,500 other dark-skinned girls. Then it's 1,500 other girls that's your height and your build. You know, so it's just like, it's kind of like picking a straw out of a hat, you know, really getting these jobs. So I've been very, I mean, I don't really believe in luck. And um, I think, I mean, everything I got, I think it was, you know, I, I was supposed to have it. I, I totally agree. I, I, said I, I was thing. just supposed to have it. It was it was my time. Yeah, I I want to say that I think you're beautiful and I think you're an amazing. Thank you. I, I hear that you you keep referring to yourself as a dark skinned girl. Um, what what when you was in the industry, how did that affect you or, or booking jobs or if you're on the catwalk, if you're doing print ads, how many girls would you see like yourself? And if not that many, how did that make you feel? It made me feel like, oh, man, I don't got a chance in the world to get this job. Like, there's so many of them. And they, I thought they all were beautiful. Like, New York City, the only place I ever went to and I didn't see beautiful people was London. But in London, I was working in London, and it was like, like I'm the only pretty one here. Like... <laughs> <laughs> because the, you know it's the women look real. Different, it's, it's a, a different whole culture. different, right? Yeah, I got it. You know, but in New York, it's like you meet a lot of beautiful people, and I'm like, why would they pick me? You know, I just was, you know, because I was down on myself. I was, I've always felt like I was the underdog, you know, of everything. So really, getting those jobs really pushed my self esteem up, you know, up to the roof. I mean, I still didn't feel like. Um, I always went in there very, very humble. I think that's what contributed to me getting the jobs. I was always on time. I was always, you know, I, I was really, really easy to work with. Not, you know, I never gave anybody any problem. I didn't, I didn't act like a diva, you know. And I was booking almost every job, I, or every job I went up for. I was booking it. Nice. Yeah. You know? Great. Um, so um, I want to ask you, uh, during, during the time during your modeling career. Uh, what was the most exciting job that you ever booked that, like, your dream was? I don't know if it was your dream job, just the most exciting job that you were like, I cannot believe that I just well, booked this job. Um, I, 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 have pay, to, I should say paying job. I have to always say being from Virginia, you know, because well, you never I, think you're really going to get this stuff. Okay. So it's like, and you don't, don't think I'm crazy. And I did a lot, a lot of good, good stuff. But I think the most exciting job, okay, I'm going to say tell you the ex exciting, and then I'm going to tell you the best. Okay. Okay. The most exciting job was a Naughty by Nature video. The Naughty by Nature and, video. And it was exciting because the guys Tretch. were fun. Yeah. yeah. And who don't want to meet Tretch? You know, yeah. back then he was like yeah. the it guy. and Hip-hop parade. Yeah. Oh. And then I was the girl. Oh, yeah. I was like the main girl and all that stuff. And Got then we, we, I mean, and he traveled us. We went from Miami to Vermont. You know, nice. on a plane, not, not on a bus. Okay. He was flying us these places, and it was all the food. And then, you know, they just treated us like we were really, like we were really celebrities. You know, wow. like, and nice. that was the first, that was my first time ever really being treated like, you know, Ro, you, you doing something, you about to make a mark. Like, yeah. this is, yeah. you know, that video is around. Yeah. I, I meet people all the time telling me about that. Yeah. I was like, are you that girl in that video? I'm like, do I still look like that girl? And I totally <laughs> forgot. I don't know how that slipped my mind. I'm so yeah. focused on the modeling career. I forgot you were in Naughty by Nature's video. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. And go ahead. I'm so sorry. my best job was um, Essence Magazine 25th anniversary poster. That was my best job. Susan um, Taylor. Susan Taylor's husband wrote a poem, mm -hmm. and on both sides of it's, it's it's a huge poster, and both sides of the poem, of uh, both sides of me is his poem, and I have on this wig, and the makeup is all done, and whatever. So I'm in the studio, and John Singleton was there, 
John so Singleton from John um, Singleton, the, the Boys in the Hood. Yeah, that, okay. He that was John he was there. He was like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. He actually take me out. You know everything. And I declined it at the, at the time. He actually take me out, and I and I did decline. Mm -hmm. So then I saw him later. So now I'm in my, all my makeup, my wig, and this and that. He's attracted to that model girl. Okay. Saw him in Miami one month later. Passed by him, and he didn't say anything to me. He didn't even notice who I was. He didn't even notice who I was. Wow. Didn't even notice who I was. So I said, hi, how are you? And he said, hi, how are you? That was it. Wow. I was like, oh, so he was more attracted to that model, the model. that model, not me. me. Yeah. You know. But it was my best job because I was just like, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, I'm doing Essence 25th anniversary poster, and John Singleton is here. Yeah. And he digging me. Yeah, ah! Nice, right. <laughs> I got it. I, I, I truly got it. I understand. Yeah. What, um, I, I, what is your, what was your biggest, I want to say challenge as a model? Like, uh, what was the biggest challenge for you? Well, as biggest you as a challenge model? for me was, you know, the casting couch is real. Believe Are you serious? The casting couch is real. Talk about that, because I have my own theory about that. Ah! You know, casting so couch glad. is real. Um, you know, and it's something but I never this really... remember daytime TV, but this Yeah, I never talk, really, yeah. you, know, you know, never really, you know, discussed it. But it's real. I found, my, I found myself in some very compromising um, positions, you know, where I needed to make a different decision fast. You know, this is going to escalate to something that I don't, I'm not going to be proud of. You okay. know, and at the time I didn't have children, you know, mm -hmm. and you know, at the time I just, I wanted it bad. I mm -hmm. wanted it real bad. Mm -hmm. And then I had to decide, you know, how bad do you really want, you it? want it? You know, I found myself, you know, uh, almost doing things that I was going to really, really regret. regret. I found myself, you know, I was popping diet pills since I was 19. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I did that for 10 straight years. You know, so um, you find yourself doing a lot of things that you... Um, you're not proud of. You do, just for that stardom, just for that, you know. And now I know a lot of people that have the stardom now that are like, you know, was it really worth, worth that? <clears throat> you know, I can't, I can't go to the supermarket. I can't do anything. I can't move around. I can't, you know, you know what I'm saying? Do you want it that bad or do you just want, you know, to be cool in your life? You want to be proud of your work and you want to, you know, move in a positive direction. You know, but that comes with age, that comes with growth, it comes with maturity. So. For me, I, I think oftentimes, I don't know if you agree with me or not, I think the industry, any type of industry, put pressure on women, especially women of color. Yeah. You know, I think it's a pressure to be thin. I think it's a pressure to be beautiful. I think it's a pressure to be lighter, to be richer, to be smarter. You know, I think uh, that oftentimes we have to work um, twice as hard as women to be successful as, as men. Definitely a woman of color as well. Um, so I, I truly get what you're saying when you said the casting couch is real. I, I kind of already know, but I kind of wanted my viewers to yeah. to to hear that. Um, so um, I also know that you uh, are a mom. <laughs> I am a mom. And, and you are a very busy woman. Yeah. So how do you balance the two and having a daughter um, and with some of the issues that you said you had in terms of, of esteem, how do you instill that in her, and how do you balance motherhood and business? Well, it hasn't been easy at all. You know, I know that I may make it look easy, but it's not easy. Like, my son is 19, and it's a lot of things that I missed in his life, a lot of times, a lot of PTA meetings, you know, a lot of school trips and stuff like that. And even to this day, like, I'm more on hands with my daughter than I was with my son because it's kind of like when you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. And when you know better, you really do do better. And, you know, at that time, I, I was 25 years old when I had my son. So, um, to me, I was the oldest of all my friends, of course. <laughs> so, it's like, you know, I was 25 and I still wanted my modeling career and I still wanted my stuff. So, I said, you know what, I'm going to try to figure out how to make this work. So, um, not that I wanted to, but I missed out on a lot of things from my son. But, just, I was talking to my dad about this recently. I told him, I said, now I know that it's okay to take the weekend off to spend it with my daughter. 
you know, it's okay to show up at the PTA meeting. And it's okay to tell your clients, you know what, I have to spend this time with my daughter. So everything that I couldn't give my son, I have learned how to give to my daughter. Like even to this day, Chance called me and said, oh, I heard you went on another school trip. <laughs> You know, been on a school trip with me, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so he, so he even still get jealous about uh, jealous about that stuff. But my dad was like, you know what? Now that you are older, it, it'll be a shame if you're still doing the same thing, and you know it's and you know it's bad, and you're still doing the same thing, but you're doing something different, you know. So and, you know, it's not easy to juggle it, but I try to, you know, try to keep that balance. Yeah, I understand. I don't think motherhood is, is an easy job. I think motherhood is an ongoing learning process. Mm -hmm. And I think that we make mistakes in that process because mm -hmm. we're human yeah. and we want to protect our children mm -hmm. and we want the best for them. We want to be the best mom. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the life circumstances doesn't allow us to be that. Mm -hmm. You know, so oftentimes we, uh, we judge ourselves as mother. Uh, we have a lot of regrets and Kids mm -hmm. are fine, trust me. They're much smarter and much finer than what you think they are. Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes it's, it's us who is hard on ourselves as, as mothers. Mm -hmm. That's why I always say mother is a verb, not a noun. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> an action. It really word. is. It's an exactly. It's an action word. It is. Right? It is. All right. I want to also talk about how did you make the transition from modeling to entrepreneurship and owner of a salon? Well... I was always a hairstylist. I was a hairstylist by trade. So when I moved to New York City, I came to model and I left my whole clientele in Richmond. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy at all trying to make that transition because it was like a modeling hairstylist, really. <laughs> like you could do hair, seriously. So it was very hard for me to pick up those industry jobs. So what I did was I took my girlfriends every two or three nights a week, I'll do their hair and we'll go to the club. And back then, they used to have a, um, a, a machine that print out business cards at the Greyhound on 42nd Street. Wow. That's... I put $5 in there, put my, my cell phone number, my phone number, and uh, my, um, if we wasn't too keen on email, I think it was just my cell phone and my, and my home number, and that's it. And, I'm, mm -hmm. and I just put hairstylist mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. And every two or three times a week, I would go and print those cards out, and I'd go out with my friends. We'll go out to the clubs, 14th Street and all that, and I would pass out the cards. And that's how I was able to build, build a clientele at home. Then later, I started doing industry people, their hair. That's how I got into the industry, doing the judges' hair and doing, you know, getting on, doing stuff like that. But it wasn't easy at all. Nobody believed in a modeling hairstyle. It's like, I don't know. I don't know about that. So the it. transition was kind of hard because I was trying to still model and do my hair. So then after I had kids, I said, you know, I got to make this thing work. I got to make my money make sense, yeah. my time make sense. So I just started doing hair full time and doing modeling less. So, so uh, also I wanted to ask you, uh, I know that you give back, and I know that you have a special place in your hearts for kids, especially little girls. Mm -hmm. You didn't know I knew that. I do. And I know you do mentorship, so talk about the mentorship and what does it mean for you? What well, does it, it mean to, to you? I'm going to tell you something. Everybody that know me know I don't even like kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to <laughs> rephrase that. And I got to. I got to. The kids are a little but challenging. I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> Me mentoring the kids. I take off work to mentor, to mentor the kids. You know, I take days off work to do do it with them. I use my own money. You know, to to deal with to deal with the kids. But it's 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 a God driven thing. I just said I just decided I'm just gonna be obedient. And he said I'm supposed to do it, so I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he said I'm supposed to do it. I don't know why he picked me. But if I'm going to do it, <laughs> if I'm gonna do learn, it I said, you know, I got to do it right. So I find different activities to take them to. Um, just, just last month, I took um, 10, 15 kids to the Apple Store. Apple they have store, a free, free program in yeah, there. I and I told you people, you know, you can pick up three or four kids and just take them. You don't have to, you don't have to do 15 or 15. You can even do one, somebody on your block, and just give them something else, like something to look forward to, you know, somebody to look forward to. Because all the time, you know, just like I said, being a mother and a father is a verb. You know, it's, it's not just, you know, having somebody in the house. You can have a mother and a father in the house and still not have parents, you know. And I tell people that all the time. These people need, these kids need to talk. They need to, you know, 
be guided. They need. They have to be guided because they get they get so jaded by what's going on in the streets, Sante. what's going on on the the, the, the television shows and all this stuff. Computers, they, phones. It's just. You know, you got to reel them in. Show them how to use social media. Social media ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. We have to teach them how to use it in a positive way. In a constructive way. Yes. Definitely. Yes. I totally agree with you. Yes. So where do you, what, what do you get, what do you get? Are they neighborhood kids, kids from church? They neighborhood um, kids. Really? Kids from the inner city. All of them. And you have a relationship with their parents? I have, a, I have, I have built relationships with their parents, but some of their parents I don't even know. That's amazing. They they let them come with me, and I don't even know I don't even know these people. So do you have a preference of age group or sex? Well, sometimes I do. What I just okay. did. Well, over the summer, last summer, we did um, uh, high schoolers, ninth to twelfth grade. Wow. Now that was something challenging. It was very challenging. Egos. That too. Personalities. Oh my <laughs> Resistance. God. But they had, I know everything. But this group of girls from Thurgood Marshall, right there on 135th Street. Oh my God. What, and, right and there. Right there. Wow. That group of girls had a lot of good questions. And one of the questions that, that resonated with me, she said, now, what am I going to, what am I supposed to do with a boy that likes me? He said he likes me, but I don't want to tell him no to sex because I don't want him to not like me anymore. Wow. Ooh. And I said, let me tell you I something. I felt that. I had to fix myself <laughs> I felt that. Oh in my, my seat. I said, let me tell you something. The last thing you want to do is be easy because when you be easy, too easy in your town, that's all you're going to be known for is being easy. Now, when he see you 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, and you don't give it to him, you're going to always be, hi, Keisha, how you doing? He's gonna, you're going to always have that respect. So until you're ready. So you don't have to worry about him not liking you because he's going to like you more because you didn't give in to it. No, I get it. And it took her a minute. She was like, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it took her a minute. I think that the kids today are, I think they're targeted. I think there are uh, so many, uh, they have so much going against them in terms of like, uh, like a parenting, you have the TVs that's targeted them, you have social media that targeted them, you have school pressure, especially for girls. Girls want to be liked, they want to be accepted. Boys want to be, um, boys want to be uh, men mm -hmm. before before they can even step into boy shoes. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I get it. Mm -hmm. I, and, and oftentimes the parents out out every day working, trying to keep a roof over their head. They can't always supervise the kids. They have they have multiple parents, or mm -hmm. I'm sorry, multiple children, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. each one have different personalities. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, they become victims to the street. Yeah. And I always tell people, especially with my own, I will always tell people that you are not the only influence on your child. Mm -mm. You can teach your child, you can make them religious, you can teach them all the good quality, principles, morals, and value. But once that child exit out, out your safe environment, it's a whole, it's a whole world, world that they are influenced by. And depending world. on who they are and what their personality is or what they're lacking that personality, mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, environment will shape them mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so mm -hmm. I really commend you yeah. for doing it. That. That's, that's a big step. That's a truly, because truly big step. Because I've been telling my son since he was 12 years old, and I, I, you know, some people got, everybody got their way of parenting, when I said, Chance, if you have sex without a condom, you're going to die. Yeah. Just That's straight true. up. Yeah, you have to be. I don't even sugarcoat it yeah, since he was 12. Yeah, you can't. So, and I even so called him today. You still the fear. <laughs> I called him today. I said, Do you, are you using condom? Yeah. He was like, Mom, I know, already know. I'm going to die. Know, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die, right? Listen, yes. you have to. Isn't that sick? Listen, I, no I'm, way I'm, I'm very straightforward. I'm, I'm that type of person too. Mm -hmm. So it's an honor to be sitting here talking to you. Sound like I'm talking to myself. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes people always say, "You're so blunt. Are you so straightforward?" Mm -hmm. I don't know any other way That's to be. It. I don't know how to sugarcoat it because mm -hmm. I see a world that we live in, mm -hmm. and I look at it and I know that sugarcoating it mm -hmm. is not gonna get it. But you know what I got out of sugarcoating stuff? Nothing. Nothing. You get nothing. <laughs> nothing. There's nothing. Just I just <laughs> not appear a, nice. Nothing. I'm such a good person. Nothing. I want to be, you know, viewed in your eyesight is perfect. <laughs> no. <laughs> nothing. It doesn't work. Nothing at all. It doesn't happen. Mm -mm. Um, so let's talk about. I know that you. Mm -hmm. what? I know you're so shocked. Have a sh talk show 
what you interview people yes, call turn smart. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about that? So my that inspiration just came from um, I see uh, I well you know of course I'm in by being a hairstylist I I run into a lot of interesting people. A lot of interesting people that may not ever get a Grammy, they may not ever get an Oscar, you know, but I feel like these people should be notarized and these people should be honored and these and we should know these people. You know, like when people see Jada on the street, they be like, oh my God, that's Jada. That's me! He's Jada! You know, and I think that people should know these people. So what I did was I started my whole Turn Smart thing, you know, um, Better Decisions, Healthy Choices. That's, that's what my whole thing is about. And the people are people that are doing stuff, you know. They, they shaking and moving. They doing, they doing things in the community, doing things for people, and they making it happen. So just in case they don't get the Grammy and the Oscar, I want to make sure everybody know them. What is the name Turn Smart come from? How'd you come up with that name, Turn Smart? I just, I mean. It's so catchy, that's why I decided. You know, whole turn up, the turn, turn up, up, the oh! turn this and that. You know, I was like, you so know, you why don't you turn smart? It. Yeah, yeah, if you, you turn, turn smart. smart. How about, how so about you that? you want to turn up? Yeah, turn, turn smart. smart. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I always say, I always do you like. You know, whatever I do it with the toe. Though. How about that? that. <laughs> with the neck, put the neck in there. How about <laughs> that? <laughs> with the face. Oh, okay. That. <laughs> Yeah, I it, it it was just I just oh my god I could talk to you forever. We always have a lot. To we talk always about. have a lot to talk. You know what? Because our do. souls and our spirits, mm -hmm. and then we're both from the same place, and then we're family. Mm -hmm. So it's we have. We, I get it. I understand the subtext of your being and your consciousness. I get it, and your spirituality. It's me. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, it really feels like I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm. I kid you not. I have a thousand questions that I was supposed to ask you <laughs> that I didn't because the flow of this was so amazing and yeah. great. Well, this right. for a great interview. Yeah. So. Thank you for coming. No I, I really appreciate you no coming. I, I really and appreciate being here. And I wish you all the best mm -hmm. and everything that you, you said Thank a you blessing. Thank you so much. And the kids are so happy to have you. Thank love, you. Love, love you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching Just Jada, Rochelle Hunter, <laughs> Mosley. Thank you.